Jonathan Shanzer, Vice President of Research at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Mr. Shanzer, thanks for being with us, sir. My pleasure. Sir, what's the potential for this uh, skirmishing between soldiers uh, to escalate into something much worse? Well, look, I, I think the bottom line here is that the Israelis know they don't really want a conflict with the Lebanese armed forces. The Lebanese armed forces definitely don't want a conflict with the Israelis. They'd be drastically outgunned. I think the real concern here is that Hezbollah, which is the, uh, the, the Iranian-backed militia that operates within Lebanon as kind of a state within a state, uh, they have uh, tangled with the Israelis multiple times over the last several decades. They would probably be very eager to see some kind of an es escalation. And so the real fear here right now is that Hezbollah might try to take advantage of what's happening right now on that border uh, and, and take things to another level. But it's your sense, sir, that it is in both parties, meaning Israel and Lebanon, it's in both their interest to defuse this as quickly as possible. That's right. I mean, from the Israeli perspective, they're concerned about a lot of other things in the region. I think notably they're more concerned about the Iranian uh, nuclear program, which is right now obviously a, a, a huge topic of discussion. Uh, but then there are also just uh, other, uh, other flashpoints around the region, the Sinai Peninsula to their south, Hamas, for example, and the Gaza Strip. The Israelis are concerned about a whole host of other issues. The last thing they want to do is to find themselves uh, in a full-fledged war with the Lebanese armed forces. And again, uh, the LAF is not a formidable fighting force. They certainly don't want a conflict. Mm. Uh, sir, Syria back in the news again today. Ban Ki-moon says the Syrian conflict tops his list of concerns. Uh, the UN has made another, this time unprecedented, appeal for aid for the people of Syria. Do you see any end in sight to the crisis, the civil war there? I don't, and, and unfortunately I don't. I mean, uh, first of all, I think it's important to note that uh, when the U.S. effectively backed out of uh, intervening in this conflict, it, it was seen uh, broadly as a green light uh, for the Assad regime to continue uh, the, the murdering of thousands, which it has done. Uh, and, and right now we've got a number of a, approximately 126,000 people who've been killed in this conflict since its beginning uh, two-plus years ago. Uh, there's, there's a concern as well that the recent outreach to Iran over its nuclear program, uh, that part of that involved concessions to the the Iranians over what's been going on in Syria. So there's a lot of concern there that Iran will continue to install Hezbollah, which we just mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the IRGC, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. These are special forces that we know that Iran has dispatched both of these uh, forces into the Syrian arena to help prop up Bashar al-Assad. And on the other side, what you have is an escalation of al-Qaeda forces sponsored by uh, countries like Saudi Arabia. So what you have is a sectarian Sunni-Shiite war that is escalating inside Syria, and we see no sign of its abatement at this time. Sir, would it be fair to say that after months of conflict, months and months of conflict, it appears that the Assad regime and the Free Syrian Army are either at or near a military stalemate? The only apparent winner in recent months appears to be al-Qaeda. Well, certainly al-Qaeda uh, seems to be on the rise. I think, look, the Assad regime, even if it stays in power, I think we need to be realistic. This is not the regime of old. It does not hold the kind of territory that it once did. And I think in many cases it's been gutted out by the Iranians. So even if Assad remains, he will be a puppet of the Iranians and therefore probably more dangerous. Uh, the FSA has been taken over by the uh, Syrian Islamic Front. Uh, and so we're seeing the rise of a new crop of, of, of rebels who I think are far less sophisticated, far less organized, and potentially more deadly because of their ties to radical jihadi groups. And so the, the landscape continues to shift. Right now, I think, yes, we're seeing a stalemate, but I think with the, with the injection of additional al-Qaeda-type fighters and jihadi fighters, you could see things swing back in the momentum of the rebellion. But again, that doesn't mean that you're ever going to see an end to this war anytime soon. Mm. Uh, Mr. Shanzer, we have less than a minute here, sir. What, what is your sense, say from the administration's point of view or from the, the West's point of view, what is the best possible outcome here? Look, the best possible outcome is, is the fall of the Assad regime uh, and a means to beat back the jihadis that have uh, taken over large swaths of territory in, in Syria. That may need to happen in, in a phased manner, but ultimately what you want are both actors out of there and to allow the Syrian people to begin to rebuild. Jonathan Shanzer is Vice President of Research at the Foundation for Defense of Democracy. Sir, thank you very much. Good to see you tonight. Anytime. Thank you.